hey guys welcome to another video on our channel and before i move on please do click the subscribe button turn on post notifications so you can get all our videos once we put them up um today we'll be going into the vikings the history of the vikings both as a nation and as a secret court so let me let me before i go into the confrontity aspect of this video let me tell you a detailed history about the vikings or as they are popularly called norsemen um from around 800 a.d to the 11th century a vast number of scandavians left their homelands to seek their fortune somewhere else well these seafaring warriors known collectively as viking or probably norsemen or they are, as they are called in the days of the old Northmen began by raiding coastal sites, especially undefended monasteries in the British Isle. Well, over the next three centuries, they would leave their mark as pirates, raiders, traders, and settlers on much of Britain and the European continent, as well as part of modern day Russia, Iceland, Greenland, and Newfoundland. Well, contrary to some people's conceptions of the Vikings, they were not actually a race linked by ties or common ancestry, patriotism or stuff. They could not be defined by any particular sense of Vikingness. Most of the Vikings whose activities are best known come from areas now known as Denmark, Norway, and Sweden. Like this Denmark, Norway, and Sweden, we are probably the ancient Scandinavians. That was what they were called back then. Though there are mentions in historical records of Finnish, Estonian, and Sami Vikings as well, well, their common ground and what made them different from the European people they confronted was that they came from a foreign land. They were not civilized in the local understanding of the world, and most importantly, they were not Christian. Well, did you know the word Viking came from the Scavadians themselves, from the old Norse word Vik, meaning bay or creek, which formed the root of Viking, which actually means the Viking. Viking means pirate for most of you who don't know. Well, the exact reason for Viking venturing out from their homeland are uncertain as nobody knows why they left. Some have suggested that it was due to overpopulation in their homeland or stuff. But the earliest Vikings, as it was known, they were looking for riches, not land. In the 8th century AD, Europe was growing richer, fueling the growth of trading centers such as Dostand, Quentovich, on the continent, and Hamwick, which is now some towns in London, Ipswich, and York in England. Well, Scandinavian falls were highly prized in the new trading markets. From their trade with the Europeans, Scandinavians learned about the new sailing technology as well as the growing wealth and accompanying inner conflicts between European kingdoms. The Viking predecessor pirates who preyed on merchant ships in the Ballistic Sea would use this knowledge later on to expand their fortune seeking activities in the North Sea and beyond. Now, what, what the, the thing there to note about Vikings? as a nation the viking clan or stuff is that these guys left their homeland went out into other lands and started conquering they didn't actually go out to walk or probably they, they went out and started conquering now the reason of them leaving was not known um people actually thought it was overpopulation but later on it happened to be like witches they went out to seek riches or stuff and they didn't end these riches i mean some of them end but most of them took these riches and stuff so well in 793 a.d an attack on the lindfen monastery off the coast in northumberland in northeastern england marked the beginning of the viking age but the culprits, probably Norwegians, who sailed directly across the North Sea, did not destroy the monastery completely, but the attack shook the European religious world to its core. Unlike other groups, these strange new invaders had no respect for religious institutions such as the monasteries, which were left unguarded and vulnerable near the shore. Well, two years later, Viking raids struck the undefended island monasteries of Skye and Iona in the Hebrides, and as well as Rattling off the northern coast of the island. Well, the first recorded raid of the continental Europe came in 799 AD, 
by the Vikings, of course. Well, this raid happened at the island monastery of St. Philbert on the Mondutia near the estuary of the Ruhr River. For several decades, the Vikings confined themselves to hit and run raids. This guy will come to your village, attack, scatter, kill people, and then take off. You won't see them. They will take off without a trace or so. So they confined themselves to hit and run raids against coastal targets in the British Isles, particularly Ireland and Europe. The trading center of the Dutch state, 80 kilometers from the North Sea, became a frequent target after 830 AD. They took advantage of internal conflicts in Europe to extend their activity further inland. After the death of Louis the Pio, Emperor of Franca, modern day France and Germany was called Francia then. In 840 AD, his son Lothar actually invited the support of a Viking fleet in power struggle with the brothers. Before long, other Vikings realized that Frankish rulers were willing to pay them rich sums to prevent them from attacking their subjects, making Frankia an irresistible target for further Viking activity. Now, let me just explain in normal terms. Now, Vikings generally. Uh, th this is like a clan which initially initially came from s the Scavidians like this was a, like a clan that came from Scavendia and Scavendia consisted of both Sweden Norway and Denmark now these guys left their land they had a land, yeah, they had somewhere. They left their land, came to other lands, came to France, came to Britain, came and started dominating. They, 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 they were practically natural raiders. They came and they raided. If they come to your village or probably your land, they will raid, loot, take out things, and then disappear. This was their nature. This was what they were known for. So, as time went on, um, people started paying homage to like the Vikings. People started like giving out a part of their wealth so that they would like tell them to like stop raiding our villages and stuff. Since it is the money that you guys want, they started paying so that they would start stop raiding their villages and stuff. That's France, ancient day France, which was called Frankia then actually stood up and told the vikings we would give you so so amount we'll give you some rich sum so that you stop attacking our subjects and it made france actually irresistible and people the vikings stopped reading france well the events in 1066 in england effectively marked the end of the viking rage by that time, all the Scavendian kingdoms were Christian and what remained of the Viking culture was being absorbed into the culture of the Christian Europe. Today, signs of the Viking legacy can be found mostly in the Scavendian origin, of which some vocabulary and place names in the areas in which they settled, including Northern England, Scotland and Russia in Iceland. The Vikings left an extensive body of literature the Icelandic sagas in which they celebrated the greatest victories of their glorious past. Well, before I move into Viking in Nigeria, Norse and Viking refer to the same Germanic people who settled in the Scavendia during the Viking Age. They spoke Old Norse. The difference between Norsemen and Vikings was that Norsemen were actually traders in the Scavendian region and Vikings were farmers and part-time warriors. Well, in Nigeria, courtism was first introduced by Professor Wale Shoinka and a group of six other friends in 1953. Meanwhile, the Supreme Vikings Confrontity, that's the Norsemen Club of Nigeria, was founded by five men in 1982 at the University of Potakot, River State, Nigeria. They were Rise Angel, the Kamelu, Shaka the Zulu, Captain Two Prince in Germany. Eric the Red and Bakana the Busha on SVC terminology. Membership of the Norseman Club of Nigeria is open to all Nigerian graduates without regards to religion, ethnic or social backgrounds. 
These are said by the Northmen Supreme Council and decided by the governor on individual applications. The Northmen Club initiates every two years and all applicants must be sponsored by a fraternity brother who has been a member for at least three years. For admission to the Northmen Club of Nigeria, applicants must have a baraculate degree with a grade point average of at least 3.0 or 4.0. Applicants also undergo a background check to ensure that they have no criminal record and series of interviews before admission. You must have a university degree or OND or HND or any of them equivalent. Members and internet members must show proof that they have a credible and good means of livelihood. Well, the structure of the Northman Club of Nigeria is a hierarchical brotherhood teamed as a ship with a crew of brothers and sailors. Thank you and that's the end of our video for today. We do hope you click the subscribe button, turn on post notification and see you in our next video.